Hello, everyone. This is James Song here. Welcome to the Tofu Show. This is episode four of the Tofu Show. So we are covering another question type in the reading section of the Tofu Test. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. So, so we are covering question type called rhetorical purpose question. Okay. And just like the last episode, before I start, I just want to tell you that since we are continuing in one full passage, okay, uh, we will read the whole paragraph four, okay, and comprehend everything, understand everything, and then tackle this question. The reason is that this is the fundamental class of helping you understand all these different uh, question type. But more importantly, two things. First, TOEFL often uh, integrates uh, different paragraphs together as one. So in my next episode or upcoming episode, if I don't comprehend everything in paragraph four, uh, it might affect negatively in my next episode or upcoming ones, okay? And second, in order to solve summary question as a question type, we need to know all these different paragraphs in full so that we can choose the right answer. So I'm not going to go to the summary question type and read from paragraph one to the end and explain each paragraph in full, it's just not going to work. So I'll do the right thing um, by comprehending the whole paragraph with you. And then when we get to the summary question, we will not have any problems, okay? So today we will cover rhetorical purpose question. So let's read the paragraph four together, okay? Reduction in numbers of games should have aborted ill for their survival in later times. Okay, so aborted. So this is a past tense of bod. Okay, so aborted means a sign of something that is expected in the future, sign of things to come, right? So aborted ill. So ill has many definitions. Uh, you know, when you're sick, when you have no energy, you're ill, right? Uh, but ill here, you know, in this context is like very negative, right? So reduction in numbers of game, as shown in previous paragraph, paragraph three in last episode, uh, should have been, you know, should be a sign, negative sign uh, for their survival in the future, okay? So reducing in number is a bad sign for the future, uh, bad sign for the deer's survival in future, okay? Next sentence, a worsening of plight of deer was to be expected, nothing new. It's not a surprise, it is to be expected because settlers encroached on the land, logging, burning, clearing, eventually replacing a wilderness landscape with road cities, towns, and factories. So long sentence, but very simple sentence, okay? So worsening, so getting worse, you know, more bad of the plight, bad situation of deer for the deer. So bad situation for the deer um, getting worse, continuously bad, was to be expected. It's not a surprise because settlers encroach, so intrude, so they take over. They come in over the limit and take something away from you. You know, so they steal the land, for example, okay? So they encroached on the land, humans, logging, burning, clearing. They did all these thing, things to destroy the forest that, you know, deer used to live. Eventually replacing a wilderness landscape with building roads, cities, towns, and factories, okay? So as settlers destroy the forest and build these things, um worsening of bad situation of deer population was to be expected because, you know, the humans did all these things, right? No doubt the numbers of deer declined still further, okay? So, so no doubt, okay, this is a reason. I don't doubt. So actually, the number of deer 
uh, declined, went down even further than the previous paragraph. Okay, so it did uh, got worse. Okay, recall the fate of the Colombian white tail deer. Do you recall this? <laughs> I'll give you five seconds to think about it. Do we know what happened to white tailed deer and which paragraph was this information on? Where could you find it? Good job. Okay, so in the first paragraph, I'm not going to go back, but if you look at the uh, TOEFL episode one, I'm covering the factual question and paragraph one. Okay, so you can look at that video uh, if you have forgotten it. Okay, so in paragraph one, what did it say about white tail deer? It was common in open prairie country. Okay, but what happened to them now, to the white-tailed deer? Now, restricted to uh, low marsh islands and floodplains. Okay, so this is referring to that sentence in the first paragraph. Okay, so Colombian white-tailed were prevalent, you know, popular. They were very common in open prairie country. Okay, but human took over that piece of land and destroyed it and built everything they need to live. So these deer number went down. Okay, so it's referring to the first paragraph and saying, recall what happened to Colombian white-tailed deer? What happened to them? Because of human civilization, white-tailed deer population went down, declined significantly okay now in a protected status that says it all okay now they are protected status means not many of them left that legally humans are trying to protect uh protect them okay and keep their numbers up but something important is coming for the black tail deer okay so their number went down as well but why is it but? I don't understand. Doesn't make sense to have but, but let's read on. But for the black tail deer, what happened to them? Uh, human pressure has had just the opposite effect. What? They destroyed their habitat, but their number increased? I don't understand. Let's read on. Wildlife zoologist Helmut Butchner, in reviewing the nature of biotic changes in Washington through recorded time, says that since the early 1940s, the state has had more deer, so referring to the black-tailed deer, not white-tailed, had more deer than any other time in its history. What? So, because human encroached, and did logging, burning, and clearing, and built um, roads, cities, towns, and factories to replace the wilderness to human civilization, unlike white-tailed deer, black-tailed deer numbers increased. Hmm. And, yeah, since the early 1940s, the state has had more deer than any other time in its history. Interesting. Let's find out now. I, I, I'm really interested, okay? I hope you are too. Why? The winter population fluctuating around approximately uh, 320,000 deer, mule and black-tailed deer in this case, so not white-tailed, which will yield about 65,000 of either sex, so had babies, production, producing, okay? Uh, and any age annually for indefinite periods, so forever. So they were having a lot of um, offspring, baby black-tailed deer, okay? All right, the male and female, and their numbers increased. Okay, more than ever. 
So it just tells us what happened. It doesn't tell us why and how. So it's going to continue in the next paragraph um, 100%. All right. So I can't wait to read the next paragraph, but let's stop here for the time being. And just tackle question number four, question type number four. Okay, let me give you a quick preview of the uh, rhetorical purpose question as a question type. Okay. So as the name implies, rhetorical purpose question is similar to inference question. Okay, because it's rhetorical, meaning they are not going to give you the answer directly. So you have to understand and imply and infer. Okay. But the nature of the question is you need to get the purpose of this rhetoric, okay? The purpose of this question, okay? All right, so you, you, you need to answer that. So it's a similar to inference type of question uh, rather than factual question, okay? So it's somewhat indirect and little inexplicit. So they're not going to give you exact answers, meaning uh, in the passage. So how do we solve this? Let's go up and actually solve it. Let's read the question together. Why does the author, so what is the reason? What is the purpose, okay? So what is the reason? And purpose, okay? So what is the purpose? Uh, what is the reason does the author ask readers to recall the fate of Colombian white-tailed deer, okay? So it's a purpose question in that. So this is a rhetoric, okay? This is a sentence. So why does author bother to say this highlighted part? To, uh, for what reason? What is the purpose of the author? Okay, what is the purpose of the author saying this? What's the reason? What is the purpose of that? Okay, so just like the inference question, I mean, of course, if it's a test, we might uh, tackle the answer choice right away, but Okay, let's let's continue. Let's finish reading the question. In the discussion of the changes in the wilderness landscape. Okay. So let's check our understanding whether we understood this uh properly. So it's here, right? So what is the purpose? Is trying to tell us doing all these things, humans doing all these things is a bad sign for the deer's survival in the future. Okay? All right? And it's just emphasizing, giving you a quick example to say, remember what happened to white-tailed deer? Their number went down greatly. Okay, so what is the purpose of saying this? To remind us humans doing all these things will decrease the number of deer. They will not be able to survive. Just like it is shown to white-tailed deer. That's the purpose of this. So it's once again trying to emphasize and giving you an example to justify this part. What humans doing is not good for their population. Okay? So if you do this, even what you thought is not exactly the same as the answer choice, you will be in right direction to choose the right answer. Because this is not a factual question, it's more inference type of question, 
you need to completely understand and be able to imply the right answer. So this is a great strategy I strongly recommend. All my students, I myself use this strategy whenever I take on the rhetorical purpose question. I don't look at A, B, C, D immediately. I try to work out what should be the answer, okay? Without looking at the multi-choice, um, you know, format. So let's look at the answer choice. To provide support evidence for the idea that habitat destru destruction, yep, I'm getting excited, by the humans would lead to population decline of the deer. Yeah, perfect. Exactly what we said just now. It's just a paraphrased, okay? All right? So provide evidence, provide example that when humans do these things, deer's population will go down to provide support for the idea that Habitat destruction by humans would lead to population decline of deer, white-tailed deer. Okay, so looks like a perfect answer. Looks like the perfect answer. B, to compare how two species of deer, it's already wrong. We haven't compared two species of deer at all uh, at this point because this highlighted expression is here, okay? So at this sentence, we are not comparing the white-tailed deer with the black, black-tailed deer, okay? It's after but. So, you know, after but is not directly related to this highlighted part. This highlighted part is directly related to the previous sentences of this sentence. So after but, it's almost like a next paragraph, right? So the fate, recall the fate of the Colombian white-tailed deer is not stated to compare white-tailed deer to black-tailed deer at all, okay? So this is wrong. No comparison. Uh, yeah, it's just rubbish or trash if you prefer. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, move on, C. To provide an example, yep, sounds good. This could be the example of a species of deer that has successfully adapted human settlement. So this would be what? Black tail or white tail? Black tail. All right, but what is um, a sentence saying? Recall the fate of black-tailed deer or recall the fate of white-tailed deer? It's a white-tailed deer. So what happened to white-tailed deer? Their numbers went up or went down? Went down. So this is opposite of the answer. To provide an example of species of deer that uh, not successfully adapted, could not adapt to human settlement, that would be the right answer could not adapt to, but it says successfully adapted. So this is completely wrong answer. Okay, so this is wrong. Sorry, getting a bit too excited. <laughs> okay. All right, D, better be the wrong answer. Otherwise I'll be in trouble, wouldn't I? To argue that some deer species already you know, it's it's specifying one species. So, I don't know. I think it's already wrong, but to argue that some deer species must be given, a, okay? So, uh, the author is saying, this is quite humorous, actually. This is pretty funny. Uh, recall the fate of the Colombian white-tailed deer. The author is saying that. To The purpose of that is, White-tailed deer should be given a protected status. It's white-tailed. It should be protected. It just makes no sense whatsoever. Okay. The author is saying the recall the fate of the Colombian white-tailed deer to imply that this is what happened to deer 
when human settlement kicks in. And what's happening is the deer population will decline drastically. That's the purpose of the author saying, recall the fate of the Colombian white-tailed deer, okay, going down. So this is totally wrong. It's not author's purpose. Okay, not so hard, right? Okay, so A is the answer. And this is a question type called rhetorical purpose in reading section of the TOEFL. All right, so let me finish by summing up a couple of things. So rhetorical purpose, you have to tackle the question type as what is the reason or purpose that author is saying something, saying that in the highlighted area. Okay, in other words, what is a purpose author saying that to convey what message? This is a good, um, you know, this is a good strategy. This is a good sentence to memorize and remember when you go into the rhetorical purpose. Okay, so when you look at the question, ask yourself, what is a purpose? Author is saying this in order to say what message? What is the message the author is trying to give by saying this? What's the purpose of saying this? Okay, so... This is the rhetorical purpose. And um, yeah, that's another question type done and dusted. I hope you liked the video. I hope it was beneficial. Make sure you press like button if you like the video and also sub subscribe and set a alarm setting so that you won't miss the uh, next episode, episode five of the Tofu Show. Thank you very much till, thank you very much for watching this video till the end. So I'll come back with episode five and I hope to see you all in my next video. Thank you guys. Have a great day.